Hey everybody, I'm Jordan at PDQ.com. Uh, normally I shoot my Patch Tuesday recap from the office, but it snowed outside and I'm not going to get my toesies cold. So I'm sitting in my basement with my PowerShell blankie and my uh, t- cup of green tea. But we're still going to get you all that uh, critical information you need about Patch Tuesday. Uh, last month is the best we've seen in a long time. 51, I think, total exploits patched with none critical, technically, uh, which is as good as we've seen in a long time. Uh, This month isn't quite as good, but it's still far better than we've come to expect. There's been 73 exploits that were patched with this one. Three of them are rated critical, and three of them are publicly known. Uh, We kind of dive into it. The three that are critical, I'm not hugely concerned about, but it's still worth talking about. Uh, The first one, and this one's probably the worst of the critical rated patches, is Microsoft Exchange. And the way this one works is the attack vector is network and user interaction is none, which is normally terrible. Uh, means it's usually wormable. But what it does have, which is uncommon in this case where there's no user interaction, is it does require privileges. And what this does is for someone who's already authenticated, they can uh, use Exchange and they can run code as the server instance and uh, run some pretty malicious code that way. So it looks really bad, but where they do have to already have authentication... It's rated as an 8.8, still critical, but it's not over a 9.0, but it's definitely, this is probably the one, especially if you use Exchange, you want to take a look at. Uh, the next two critical, they're very similar. So we just kind of, I'll cover one and just know that it's, the result's pretty much the same. And what there is, is there's video extensions out there where they found an exploit where with those extensions, you can open a certain file type and it can crash your machine and cause other other issues. Uh, in this one, we're doing VP9. The other one is HEVC video extension. Uh, the results are the same on either one. It's just both of the extensions. Uh, on the positive note, if you don't use on-prem exchange and you don't use the VP9 or HEVC extensions, you've got back-to-back months of no critical issues in your environment, and that's pretty sweet. Uh, I say on-prem just because I assume if you're using Office 365 or Exchange 365, they're going to patch that for you without you having to worry about it. Uh, for this one, the regular patch will update it, but if you're curious, if you do know you have a certain department that does use those extensions and you want to make sure that they're covered, just come in here with PowerShell. There's GitEpix package, and you can grab the extension there. And if the version is greater than 1.0.42791.0, then you are protected and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, that's just a way you can quickly go in and see if you're protected or if you need to. Otherwise, you can do pipe the git into a update dash apex package, and you can get the latest version that way. Or you can just do your regular uh, patch Tuesday updates, and you should be protected. And it's the same thing with the HEVC. There's an asterisk at the end of that one. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I'm taking the notes from the actual CVE article. Uh, just It's just worth looking into. So if you know you have a department that uses those extensions, it might be worth it to go take a little bit extra look. Uh, the last one we're going to cover is this one was not listed as critical, which once we dive into it, it surprised me. It's an interesting one. Uh, what this one is, is this remote desktop client uh, and is remote code executable. I mean, that sounds bad. That's You can run remote code against RDP. Uh, that, that's pretty bad. There's uh, no privilege required, but it does require user interaction. And the way this one works is if you have a... RDP server that has been corrupted or they are connected to a machine outside of your environment, when they RDP in, it has the ability to run code against the system that way. So it's not listed as critical. It's still an 8.8, but not listed as critical just because it's not on the server side. You have to connect to it. And if one of your machines has been corrupted in this way or your users are connecting where they shouldn't, you have, you've already been breached at that point. This just makes it easier to build on that breach. Either way, uh, this, this is one where it falls within the not technically critical, but I'd still treat it as as that. This one probably is the one of my greatest concern. But either way, I mean, the results are the same, critical, not critical. There there was three that were previously known. Now there's 73 because they announced it with this update. So you got to patch your systems. Uh, if there's something that's going to come by every month, automating your system is just something you might want to look in how to best automate it. I recommend PDQ and deploy. I may be a little bit biased, but find the solution that works for you get everything set up and make sure that you're patched and you're protected. Uh, For PTQ.com, I'm Jordan. Mm